So here we have the new refreshed 2023 Chevrolet Blazer RS. And this one comes in black on jet black perforated leather interior. And of course with the RS, you get those red accents in the leather as well. But the powertrain consists of a 3.6 liter naturally aspirated V6 engine made with a nine speed automatic transmission. And as we go around to the front here, you can see where kind of the body lines and the grill have just been slightly refreshed. And we have those LED daytime running lights along with the LED headlamps. But I just really love how they made this nice and big here and how they got all that to match there. Looks really, really slick. And we also have these new wheels. Of course, the same 21 inch size, but just a different design, which I really like. Black badging here. Passive keyless entry on all four doors. And to the door panel here, we have our power door locks, power windows. Driver's side is one touch up and down. Then we have a window lock here, power mirrors here. And then we have our power lift gate control there. So we can turn that depending on how high we want it to go, or we can turn it off. And then the button here activates it open and shut. Little pocket here, bigger pocket here with a cup holder. Bose sound system, electronic parking brake with headlamp controls. And there we have our power driver seat with power lumbar support. Like I said, those red accents there, I just love that interior, just how that middle part, that insert looks so, so slick. And with this being so new, we don't have all the options and all that on the window sticker yet, but fuel economy, crash test ratings, Let's hop in here. So pretty impressive leg room with this being uh, like a mid-size SUV without it being necessarily a three row like an Acadia or a Tahoe or something like that. I like that I'm able to have my knees behind the seat and it's not touching the back at all. And the seat in front of me is adjusted for someone of my size of 6'3". So really impressive there. And if I do want to spread my legs out a little bit and no one's in the second seat, or middle seat, I have plenty of space to do so. And this isn't necessarily intruding on my leg being over here. But there we have our rear AC vents, USB-C, USB-A charging port, along with a 120 volt three prong household plug-in. And then we even have a little pocket way down in there to stow stuff. But there's a nice view of the front from back here. And then here we have our cup holders in the center seat. And I like how back here we have this little hook if you wanna hang one shirt or whatever, and then you still have the bar to grab onto if you wanna do that. Or you can hang multiple shirts from there. But let's check out the trunk space. So one of my favorite things about this slight refresh is those new tail lights. We have that kind of halo ring for the middle tail lamps there and LED as well for the brake lights, etc. Really like that. And there's our power hatch there. Plenty of cargo space. And then two side pockets to stow stuff we don't want loose out and about. We have a 12 volt in there. And then you can pull this here. You can do it for both sides. I'm just gonna demonstrate with that side just to show you the cargo space with the seat down and with the seat up. And then we have a nice spare tire there. Not a full size, but I believe it's an 18 inch. And there's that dual exhaust down there too. Now, if you wanna fold the seat back up, you just come around here, take some force, but you can just push it back into place and it'll lock in. And here we have our front passenger seat, power seat, back seat, bottom. And 
and there's that passenger door panel there. But just a really, really, the Blazer's been a good looking SUV since it's been out, but just love this slight refresh here. Let's go ahead and pop the hood. Take a look at the engine bay. And there's that 3.6 liter naturally aspirated V6. So that carried over pretty, pretty identical to last year. But now let's hop in the driver's seat. So there's our leather wrapped steering wheel, which we can heat there. Very easy to, depending on how you like to drive, put your hand wherever. And then we have this new 10.25 inch infotainment screen here. So we get AM, FM, XM along with Bluetooth audio, wireless Apple CarPlay, and then we get Android Auto as well. And there's our navigation system there. And I like that this one still is just a regular one. You don't have to subscribe to Google Maps. And then here we have our dual zone automatic climate controls and we can control that from the screen. Or down here we have actual buttons and then knob for temperature here and then actual fan speed we can adjust here. And there's our backup camera with guidelines. There's our front camera. And then we have our curbside cameras in the front. And then we also have a kind of a tow hitch view there. And I love having this extra stuff here because look, there we have our 360 view and then we kind of have a trailing view there, which I really like. And over here we have our auto stop hazards. Pretty good size wireless charging pad. And over here to our shifter, we just push the button behind, hold, reverse, neutral, drive, and then low mode, and we can manually shift there. And then we have our parking sensors, our lane departure, and then we have our three drive modes along with the tow haul mode. So tour, snow, sport, and like I said, that tow haul mode there. And then here we have our center console cubby space. We have an, an SD card reader for the navigation, a USB-C port and a USB-A port along with a 12 volt in that closed kind of compartment there. Then here, we have our universal home remote, LED dome lights, one touch sunshade, open and shut for this huge panoramic sunroof. Then we can one touch tilt, as well as slide the sunroof. Just love that. One touch close there. And up here, we have storage for sunglasses. Then we have our rear camera mirror here, which we can toggle that on and off. And there's a nice view of the back seat from up here. Got to open the glove box, hit this button here. Owner's manual's in there. Traction control button there. Over to the steering wheel. Like I said, we have the heated steering wheel toggle there cruise controls here, which this one has adaptive cruise. We can adjust the gap adjust for that as well as the forward collision by hitting that button. And then over here we have voice recognition, a mute button, and then we can toggle our gauge cluster here, depending on what we want to see. And then we have push button start. And finally, Here's our key fob with remote start. And I almost forgot we have another USB-C and USB-A port there. Didn't even see those. But now let's go ahead and take this 2023 Blazer RS out on the road for a quick test drive.
So the V6 has plenty of pickup, even with it being naturally aspirated. But especially in sport mode, you can feel how fast this thing is. But I'm gonna dial it back into tour mode as I get on the interstate here. And the acceleration is a lot more controlled and as much as I like the sport mode, the tour mode is going to be more practical if you drive this every day, especially at speeds like this. I'm going to get up to about 75. And then we have adaptive cruise on with lane departure. Just going to test out. We have kind of a ping pong there. And it's decent at keeping you in the actual lines. But like I said in many other reviews, I just wish that I could pay an extra 1500 bucks and get lane centering with adaptive cruise. That's as good as Super Cruise is. But I really like how the adaptive cruise, especially when you're behind somebody who acts like they're the only people on the road, does a really good job of keeping you from having to slam your brakes and get agitated, especially after a long day at work. Now you can just kind of relax because this will bring you to a full stop and I'll demonstrate that here. Haven't touched the brake pedal. <clears throat> And then the blazer brought me to a complete stop. Now I don't like that it gets so close because then people think that you're trying to start something. But I mean, it's there if you need it, but it's not necessarily meant to be used in that way. And if you have just maybe a kid or two and you don't necessarily need to have a third row, and like I showed you, it still has plenty of cargo space, this would be a good option for you if you wanna drive something that, let's say you don't take the kids to soccer practice every other day and you just kinda of maybe pick them up from school or maybe you and your significant other kinda of trade what days you pick up, whatever. This is something good where you look good in the vehicle you're driving. It's still practical. It still has power and it's still safe. And just a really good overall vehicle for the money because like I said, especially with the refresh, these are some of the baddest looking cars on the road right now. Even though they're blazers and they're kind of borderline mom SUVs that don't want S giant SUVs or minivans, they still look fantastic. Especially in the RS trim level. And the only thing that this is missing for me, which I'd be fine without, but I'd like to have is gonna be the cooled seats. I have the heated seats, the heated steering wheel, so that's 
enough but I always love having cooled seats, especially when I'm out in the heat. I always appreciate them more than when I'm not. And it's hot in here and I don't want the AC up really loud because I'm filming. And it's kind of where I wish I had like a stage one or stage two cooled seat on right now and I'd be perfect. But still, like I said, for this vehicle, it really has everything that I would want especially with the adaptive cruise and like I said I'm eh, I don't need to have the cool seat but it'd be nice to have so with all that being said just still a great vehicle and just looks a little bit better and those are my final thoughts on the 2023 Chevrolet Blazer RS